Hello everybody, so another hard surface exercise. So in this case I did this kind of ball ideas, like uh, maybe it's uh, some sensor ball or some holographic probe. And I did it about in an hour for real time without any preparation before, so it's a uh, you know, pretty interesting technique because uh, 3D code allows you to instance a lot of uh, sculpts and let's uh, get into it. Okay, so we started the ball, it's just a sphere, so, and I immediately increased the resolution of the sphere to like a million, which is like the bare minimum, really. So now I want to hide a piece of this uh, sphere. And by the way, the speed of it is about 3x, uh, 3x speed. So I usually record at 4x speed, but in this case, I decided to go a little bit lower, a bit slower, because I uh, just uh, finished it pretty quick. So uh, object is quite uh, hidden, and that allowed me to kind of turn that hidden volume into a new object, that same sphere. And then I wanted to just match that same sphere and see how big it was, and it turned out to be a bit too big. So I made it small and I did the same step. I hid the volume and then objectified hidden. So now I'm doing the uh, symmetry, uh, the radial symmetry from the top for essentially the screw parts. And uh, just redoing it, trying to get a better cut. And I'm using rectang uh, like, uh, the rectangle cut tool to cut. And I'm doing the unhide. A tool from the side to unhide the uh, like well, part of the metal. So now I'm using the primitives. So since I'm still having that, uh, um, well, a regular symmetry on, I can actually just you know to make six bolts at the same time. I don't need to switch and turn on any, any buttons. Just need to place the cylinders in place. And I did duplicate the layer just before that. And I duplicated the layer and uh, deleted all the polygons, uh, all the voxels. So now I have this layer with six uh, screws, and I want to do essentially the little hole for the screwdriver, right? So, and I did that, did it using the vox height. So then I'm unhiding from the sides, and now I have a little indent. It doesn't go through the whole thing. And yeah, now we have our basic layer with. Uh, the basic uh, part from the top and uh, six screws here. So now I started to experiment with just walk side and uh, and you can spend a lot of time just doing the shapes. And this is a really big benefit of 3D code essentially that you can play around with shapes until you get enough experience and understanding of how it should look uh, good. And you can try uh, like 50 shapes in like three minutes if you want to. So here I'm again unhiding parts and looking at how it looks using the fill tool to see if I uh, maybe can smooth this out and so on. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some like gyroscopes and um, like inertial sensors from missiles and all that stuff for as a reference. Uh, found some on Pinterest. Like if you look for advanced inertial sensor you'll find this uh, kind of block it's not exactly the same i'm always just picking some hard surface reference and then i'm redesigning it and in the end it became of a, like a more of a ball which more like a hologram ball i guess i would imagine that will be uh, sending some rays or something so what i've done here i did the instance of the top part and then instance will allow me to later modify everything and have full control over all six parts or not six parts but actually how many just uh, instancing everything here so it'll be like uh, like eight, three, uh, I don't even know, like one to three, or six. Actually, six parts, so uh, which is awesome. Again, uh, 3D code is an amazing feature that sculpts instances, which is um, like it's insane. Like, you can have uh, instant sculpts and uh, do whatever you want, and it will be all projected and repeated in the, another instance. And uh, essentially, this whole thing is about that: how to uh, make something that looking fairly complex, uh, but quite fast. So you know, you see, this is actually kind of done by this point, to be honest. So I'm just cutting uh, parts from the sides, so so get get a more like chiseled look. So yeah, there you go. I mean, this is kind of done at this stage, to be honest. It's, uh, you got the major shapes, you got everything now. It's more with small detailing work and uh, what have you. 
Now, I'm using a post tool, which can allow me to do this kind of cuts, not cuts, but modifications to the mesh. And obviously, the change got reflected across all other parts. I thought about it just was a bit offset this part, and I thought like, maybe I should rotate it in the place. And I used the pulse tool to rotate it a little bit, and when I, I figured out that it doesn't really make a much of a difference, and uh, yeah. And actually then didn't like that I offset it in the wrong direction and I decided to undo that. So I want to unhide that hole in the middle. So I didn't hide it from the left side. Again, trying to smooth it out and I, I'm seeing that it doesn't really look that great. So I'll just keep it. Uh, as I go, I quite often press F12. This is my hotkey for me for smooth all. Here I'm doing this uh, little cut from the side. I'm increasing the density of this this uh, main sphere. And when I did that, it immediately unhid everything. It's an old bug inside. It's really cold. Usually if you have hidden volumes and you, you change the sampling rate and you make it more dense, everything gets unhidden. So you want to duplicate the sphere. You want to turn it into a surface and then back from surface to voxels and it will kill all the hidden volumes. Because we have a button to destroy, to delete hidden, but it doesn't actually always work out. So now I'm able to do this little cut. And I've just smoothed it all a little bit. Playing around with the materials. And actually, the materials, I really enjoy the way the viewboard looks inside 3D code. I'm never tired of saying that. So now I just click on render and just check it out. Again, this can might look even better than what I get in the end, just uh, simpler than, uh, you know, the not dividing it too much, like I, I got a bit too carried away. So here I'm doing a, using a split tool to cut out uh, little parts. So, and the, I did that cut out and it got, you know, replicated across all other instances. So I essentially created a new layer, a sub layer in that parent uh, stack on my right. So now I'm doing a little random. And uh, I, then I'm doing the same thing in front. So maybe it's like uh, some kind of, Produce some laser beam or know, holographic projection, or it's a flying ball which projects something. Again, just taking a look at this middle point, so trying different ideas. And I did a split and then I assigned some refractive uh, material to it again. Trying different materials here. Again, we can spend a lot of time just playing around with them and trying. You really can get a pretty finished look development inside where you go. At this point, at this point, I actually wanted to finish it and say, okay, let's just, but then I decided to add a few cuts here and there and got a bit carried away. Using the post tool, I wanted to do some beveling effect there, but kind of moved it up and down and forgot about it. So now I'm doing the split tool because I wanted to apply material here. It's slightly different. So every time I do that split, you get a really rough edge. So I have to go and press F12, and you can see the dialog that appears. And I have to press F12 and enter, F12, and that will smooth it out. So now I decided that I'll do some kind of port here and I'm using a split, which gets me a pretty dirty edge. So I need to resample this sphere to like 0.5 million. In this case, this whole sphere in the end was about 15 million triangles. 
So it's pretty dense. It's not definitely not a, a easy light scene. So you can see here I've uh, got it out and then smoothed it out a few times. Just decided to do a little hole here, and uh, this two kind of this like second one kind of bothers me. I didn't spend enough time, and it's almost it's visibly smaller than the other part. I was just eyeballing the size, so I did it too quick. So I decided to do like maybe a rubber seal around the uh, sections. So this is like um, idea of it to be a bit of a seal. And you know here you can kind of clearly see the scale of the object. It's probably can fit in your palm because of the screw size here. So you can like ideas that they can push it up and maybe it will float in the air. Who knows? You can see and uh, I did another cut. I think that one was kind of necessary. I don't know. Really, these two cuts for these two rings, whether really necessary or not, don't know. So I have to do these cuts from all the sides because even with all the symmetry that I had, it doesn't. It's not enough. So I have I do like cuts from one side, cuts from another side. So I kind of eyeball it all the way. So I'm just doing it fairly fast. I'm playing with the materials. And I'm just smoothing the rings. The final run that I just did inside 3D code, I didn't uh, export it anywhere. Just uh, didn't have too much time on this project. And really, it's qu quite about it. Nice, easy way of doing some complex stuff with clean, effective modeling inside 3D code. So thank you for watching. Next, so let's see you next uh, video.